what they want and then taking a little too much is what puts them behind. Yesterday they were able to remedy that. We'll see if they can carry that play style into today. Quick bands going towards the mid lane. It's actually going to be that blue side cast band. See if they can get something else out from Curse's bands here. There's the Trist. There's the laugh from Boy Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Full belts are on a stretch. Don't have to deal with that. Thank you. Some safety in the mid lane. <laughs> Very everything so far besides that Nidalee pointed at the mid lane. Yeah. And Morgana as well. It's been Crepo's favorite. Yeah. Tried and true. This is almost daring EG to pick Braum though. So much of Braum being kept in check is the fact that people play Morgana against it. They ban Morg, one of Crepo's best supports. They're telling him to pick Braum, otherwise X Special will pick it on the next go round. But that leaves a lot of stuff up. You know, if they pick Braum, that means Quas gets Lulu, something they dominate with. They're putting EG in a bit of a pickle here. Who do they give it to? Cobalt has been known to actually take mid and just blind it, but there's really not a situation that leaves him safe enough like a Cassidy. There's Gragas so many even. options. Yeah. But Gragas and Lulu should big theoretically up. be traded picks. If I'm EG here, I feel like you want to take Braum as long as Krepo's confident. At least to get it away from Expecial. I mean, there's still a thresh in the game to be played on that situation. All but right. EG says late game is where we're going to bring the pain. Kog'Maw gets locked in. First pick. Hard to argue with that when you consider the huge performances Inox has had, or sorry, uh, Altec has had on right. Kog'Maw. They had that really quick and decisive win over CLG where he was 6 1 1. Yeah. Making quick work of early kills and definitely carrying it out of lane. Decisive pick, dominate right onto that Evelyn. It's been working well for him the past few games. This would be three in a row if he decides to lock it in. Or four in a row, I should say, if he decides to lock it in. Special looking at Braum. Mm. The Braum makes sense. If you're looking at what Curse has it. been doing lately, you would think they'd pick Lulu instead of Eve because they're giving EG a chance to take Lulu now, who is also fantastic at protecting Cogbomb. Yeah, good point. And... While it's possible that Helios would take Eve away from them, he has not really played it lately. Oh well. He's got a lot of options. The Elise stays up. His Nunu is up for protection and speed on that Kog'Maw if they do want to go for it. They're also looking to put a support behind him right now. So they, they're kind of deciding what comp they want. They only have an AD carry at this point that goes late game. Mm -hmm. Shields are going to be unnecessary. There's one. There's right now, overall, there's two. Perfect. Yeah, the Lulu steal away and then Thresh because that's really the next best support right. for fighting against Braum. Everyone wants Cop to do Varus. He did pretty well on it when oh. he does play it. True. He does pretty well. True. Yeah. His Corky yesterday was actually pretty strong. I think that champion really fits his play style. And I'm very curious to see what Voiboy Boy defaults back to with Trist gone. He has had some success on Orianna. Of course, there's a lot of stuff banned away right now. Syndra is always an option for Boy Boy, even though he generally suffers defeats on that champion. They could do Zareth with the Q's piercing arrows. Are they gonna Whoa. Be for, Shen's? for Shen? No. Boy Boy mid rise. It looks like Quas is going to be the leave out here. 10 seconds on it. They're just trying to play the love of the crowd. Hey! Oh, they lock it in. They do lock it in. It looks like it's going to be Quasis. He's prepping the hands. Right Great. on. Throw some blades. I was trying to ask a lot of the NALCS pros yesterday, who do you think the first team to break out Shen is going to be? Didn't expect Curse, actually, of all the teams. When, in fact, we probably should have thought they would be the first. With the style they play, who they bring to the table, what and when they bring it to the table. Curse has found success deviating from the norm in many situations. Chen is the old norm, but he has been gone from the LCS for so long. Brushing off the dust, the dust here. You can do a little sneak attack ganks with Eve and a Shen coming in on her back. Should be some pretty cool plays that they have the potential to orchestrate. It's a subtle submarine. We'll see if they can get it in. Syndra does get picked up for the mid lane. We're seeing what boy boy. Sides will be a strong enough pickup here. Still has the Zareth, still has range. 
doesn't We've really seen Poe Belter play the other, rise. play the opposite end of the Rise versus Cinder matchup. Void Boy could go with that since That's it's a, true. Just get the cloak. Not a super conventional mid laner, more Void Boy's style of being able to run in there and create some havoc and deal some big time damage. Negatron, Cloak Rush. Would he really? Would they go ninjas? He's messing with us. The Kinku Order. Bring it in. No, oh, she's not in the order. That's all right. Yeah. Whoa. Fizz and hey out. Now. Very nice. So, even though Fizz didn't have any changes in the 4.12 patch, uh, he was banned six out of the eight games in Europe. Uh, picked one and actually was able to win that game. And we were all wondering who the first Fizz player in North America would be because we haven't, I don't think we've seen Fizz this split. No. I will be able to get corrected. Uh, pick rate, two out of 93. There it so is. he has been seen. Uh, I'm trying to think. Very infrequently. Shifter? Maybe. I played a game I, on it. For ah, sure. yes. Yeah, I can remember it. Just above Dragon. He dove in and died in the situation. Either way, this is a team part. that really wants to be able to punish Cogba. And if it does end up going late, that Fizz should be rather threatening. This is Curse with a new pick in the top lane for them, a new pick in the mid lane for them, and a lot of diversity coming in. I'm very interested to see how this composition works out, and we're tallying the votes over on lolesports.com. What we've come up with from your votes is Curse is ahead. 68% to 32 right now. But if things start going south for Curse, you can update your vote by tweeting EGWIN, or if they don't start going south for Curse, you can keep <laughs> tweeting the hashtag CRSWIN. Because that'll be the correct choice if they're doing well. And starting off this game, what I was saying I'm interested to see is if they can get, you know, ahead of the game a little bit, Voidboy's not afraid to dive in, and you're going to have a Shen stand united mm. coming in to protect that Fizz that's already on your back line. And I don't think the question of when we're going to see Shen was so much about can he still work. It's more about how long does it take for someone to get used to playing with him again? Because it does require a lot of team coordination to use those right. channels optimally. And it's one of the big reasons that he was such a standard in competitive play all throughout the 2012 and yep. 2013 seasons. And as well now, if you're EG, how long since they've played against Shen? Being able to calculate when the Shen ult is the up. The window, yeah. Yeah, the windows. It's really long cooldown. Three minutes, I believe, at the first rank. But it's going to be a bit of a learning experience. 200 seconds. Also, we'll see how they play it in the early part of the game. Not the easiest person to gank by himself in a lane. Just taunts you onto the turret, and he's going to make it a bad, bad day for his pursuers. We'll see where they can go with this first play. Looks like we're going to get a regular standard jungle, if I had to say anything. Dominates on his eve, so he may go aggressive just after that three-minute standard start. Yeah, back to the basics in the jungle. Mm -hmm. to Summoner's Rift. Back to the even basicer basics in the top lane with Shen. Come on, cop. He always plays a dodge game right here. Will he get hit? Doesn't matter. Probably not. Playing it safe. It's always him. I don't know why they do that. Just it's like a curse thing. Leaves it up. I feel like it definitely like weeks go anywhere. It definitely exposes Curse to a highly organized strategy, which I think when Curse, if Curse makes it to the playoffs, a team will try to attack this, mm -hmm. knowing that Curse does a defensive line with Cop in the middle every game. Right, Fog of War, Morgan, you could get a binding on that. There's something to do to Cop here, or even just exploiting Curse as a team because they know they have their AD carry in the mid lane. Yeah. Fish out of water, just hanging. Looks like they're pushing it a little bit, but I don't think Altec's going to go any farther than just on that bottom side. So easy peasy in the start of the game. Jungles are actually going to end up on the same side uh -oh. here as we start. And I believe we have Cop chatting it up with QC at the moment as we get yeah. the start of this game figured out for each other. Actually, Cop has something in his eye. He needs to go quickly, get some water in there. Something's going on. So hopefully he's all right. Maybe a straight contact lens. I've had that before. That's, I don't even know if Cop wears contacts. I always feel bad. I don't have contacts, but that's yeah. a scary thing. It's like, oh, yeah, my contact rolled in the back of my head. You're like, what? <laughs> like, uh, it did what? Believe oh, don't not, worry. It'll just come forward. It's not that bad. All right. Yeah, I've had it happen a few times. I am a contact lens wearer myself. Well, I believe you. Many years. He's alive. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's not that bad. Sometimes it gets folded up near the top of the <sighs> eye, and you just got to, like, oh. you don't even, you just got to pull your eyelid out and move your eye, and then it'll catch on. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. there you go. <laughs> got it. Just good to go. So as yeah. we start this one, we aren't seeing too much difference from anybody except for the Fizz coming out of mid. 
That'll be nice. The yeah. Shen in the top yep. lane is going to be big. We said that was available. It does get picked up. We were considering somebody would do it eventually throughout week 10. And we've talked a lot about Curse, but we haven't talked that much about EG. They have obviously been struggling for quite some time. The team just, they show brief glimpses of hope, yeah. but something just isn't right within this team as far as being able to succeed. The one thing that has been a trend that has been consistent throughout all their victories is Alltech. If he doesn't destroy, the yeah. team generally loses. He is pretty much the sole carry of these guys when they are successful, at least in their last victories. You look, the two games they won uh, in their last nine or so was against Curse in week eight, where he went 11-1 and one on Trist, yeah. or against CLG in the week after, where he went 6-1 and one on Kog'Maw. Everything other than that, no one else even went big in those games on on right. EG. And you have to question what happens when they do come out of the laning phase on top. How much faster would those games be if Alltech was already a few steps ahead of the game? They're always trying to get him triple kills and quadra kills in those team fights because they're already five kills behind. Being ahead in the game, I think, is what really could put EG on the top and make them a contender for some of these spots. We, we hear it from every team. It's hard to hear it and not see it when they're like, they do great in these scrims, they do it's this. True. And then we, we don't see those results. You're kind of like, really? Are, you, are, are they being nice now? Because we're not seeing it. Funnily enough, actually, these are two of the teams that probably have had the most mismatched performance between scrim yeah. and live That's event. A good point. Talk to Crapo all the time, and we do get some updates on how their scrims are going. And pretty much every week, they're positive in scrims. They're beating pretty much all the other LCS teams yeah. in scrims. Curse is another team that kind of dominates some teams in scrims. And whether that's because the higher tier teams try to experiment on the lower tier teams in scrims with the unconventional strategies, and that's what leads to victories, yeah. or if it's just a stage fright scenario or just not being able to play when the pressure's on. There's Cop. And there's something that, that Curse has actually gotten themselves attuned to as well. They were a team that had some jitters at the beginning of the, of the games. We haven't really seen that on their up and up here. They've started getting a little more camaraderie. We've heard them talking about each other and building each other up on the desk. And it seems like those nerves have calmed for the start of our game, for it to go better. And Curse has been coming out. We've talked about those first bloods. They're mostly in Curse's favor. Should be able to get back into this game. It's tough coming back from stuff in your eye. Usually happened a lot to me during sports. Like if I was playing basketball, someone could randomly poke you in the eye. And it takes That's a while. Bad news bears. Yeah. I don't, do not know what happened to Cop because we're playing a video game. But he, he does. Hey, yeah. anything. Anything yeah. could happen. Straight eye. But we're back into the game. He's safe. Cop is all right. We've gotten the medical, medical attention that mm -hmm. he does need to be able to shoot somebody on Summoner's Rift here. We're going to be locking it back down. He takes his place back in the Corky plane, and he's ready to go. So regular starts, as we said before. Helios does have that ward. We'll see where he decides to put it. If he gets somewhere towards the top side to give Inox a little bit more help here. As they roll around the jungle to start things off. Ooh, interesting how both bottom lanes actually assisted in the pull instead of making it to lane right off the bat. It actually kind of tells me both lanes were planning on playing defensive in the first place. Yeah. It's actually something we saw in, or in Ox, yeah. Quas was on Lulu yesterday and he put a Glitter Lance and a few auto attacks on Dominate's Red so it could get through a bit faster. So, mm. huh. Works out for him. We'll see if anything really plays to that level two since they got there late in the lanes. Always love Shen in the top lane. You can be such a harasser with those Vorpal Blades. You just keep chucking them out. It's one of the best defensive top laners as well. Very, very hard to get out yeah, of the lane. Yeah, super slippery. But it'd be very interesting. I mean, Shen has been out of the LCS for pretty much the entire resurgence of Lulu in the top lane. Mm -hmm. So it's a matchup that no one is really that familiar with. I will want to see how that goes. Most likely, it'll just be a farm advantage. But there's a chance Inox or Quas can pull out something special. Jungler's definitely trying to turn the tides early. Dominate always ganks early. He's so good at it. He's right at the three minute mark as well. Very nicely. Oh Whoa. no! Boss misses his taunt flash, and that makes them vulnerable. He's out of dashes. You all, yeah, you didn't hit anything, so you don't get a refund on energy. Oh my gosh, what a turnaround. Curse going way too hard for that. You can say that. That was just a big time misplay. Not only did Owl Dominate take too much damage, that bad taunt flash by Quas really cost him. That's only the sixth time another team has got first blood, almost second, as wildcard Pole Belter starts to pull out a level three aggression on Voiboy. He does not look like he's sleeping! No way! Voiboy 
Boy couldn't even blink on that. Yeah, so just first off, there, before this game, 18 of 23 games, Curse had first blood. They got shut down completely in this one on two fronts. Boy Boy getting crushed in the mid lane and the misplay in the top lane. We talked about how when EG succeeds, it's only when Alltech does well. Maybe the other guys are pitching in this time. Yeah, definitely starting the fire in every lane. That was well played by Pole Belter, timing out the Trickster and the Playful Entry. Dominates her. immediately trying to pull this back. They know Inox, burn his flash, and he's a little low on mana, but the one hits. Glitterlands. He uses the Whimsy, not the Polymorph. It looks like he made the right decision. Dominate cannot tank. And he still has Teleport to get back to lane. So safe on his part. Quas not with Teleport. Already yeah. back to lane though, but they'll have the kill aggression to keep going on Inox. Will they stay there? It's Gonna have to start helping every lane. We have all the teleport top laners kind of following Shen around. The Shen himself doesn't bring teleport, so at <laughs> least in the laning phase, he's harder to come back from and yeah. wouldn't have as much lane presence. They were hoping that Ignite would help them with an early kill, because none of the top laners bring Ignite nowadays. It's a little bit of underestimated lane pressure, but everything went wrong there for Curse. Slow play. Nice heals and relic gives as they just get the money generation in in the bottom lane. This is a very, very slow lane compared to the most duos that we see, especially between Crepo and Alltech. Like specials trying to hit things usually. Not as much as we usually see. Boy Boy's not having fun in this lane. Look how calm Pole Belter is. And he's not afraid of I will dominate right now because he knows how much time and energy he spent in the top lane, which will diminish Eve's threat. Plus, the lane is pushing away from Quas. It's a dangerous, dangerous game right now. Dominate trying to get that so last use. should have been respecting Eve. Boy Boys needs to dodge spells coming in. No. Getting the last use out of this blue buff probably on the gank. He goes in quite hard. Oh, Playful Trickster, they're going to lock it down. Boy Boy walks it in. Very nicely done. We've forgotten that Poe Belter used his flash yeah. when he was going aggressive. He, he went under the turret. That's a pretty nice move there for Curse trying to get back in there. I Will Dominate does always keep up his early game aggression. To keep the game pretty close, actually. 700 gold. Helios was hoping. Dominate would want more, yeah. Stray over here. But they're both going back to base. So I think that was a great move by Helios. It just didn't pay off. He's going to be able to get a little bit out. He doesn't leave empty-handed on this. Specifically, look at the deep wards he got, though. He got a pink ward behind the red buff. It'll be very telling to see if I Will Dominate checks that brush. It's a favorite pink ward brush for many counter junglers. We'll see if it... He has a level advantage on him, actually. Whoa. They could collapse him a little bit and punish here. Those are the pings. Helios has repel, but he has nowhere to go just yet. Oh, wow, Inox is really just there to save him? They're not going to give any aggression to this. The rotation was coming in from Boy Boy. Curse is just saying, not yet. They're stronger. This is the part where Curse says, let's not, when they probably could sometimes. I do have to point out as well that that blue buff is not actually on I Will Dominate. Right. So it's just a particle bug that's been happening when we pause Spectator. We'll be fixed in the future. But for now, it is not uh, a blue buff. And we look here to the mid lane now. Boy Boy. Getting another traditional matchup for himself starts to fall behind. It's not the out of the pushing the meta. It's not the Tristana. It's not something that he's going to be able to take you by surprise. And that traditional matchup usually doesn't go in his favor. So now we're in this situation where we're seven and a half minutes in. Yep. And Curse has been very good at responding to other teams' mistakes or when they start making panicky moves, which is why it's so important for Curse to actually pull far ahead in the early game because then they basically just win. As far as coming from behind is something Chris isn't that great at, but Dominate is on fire right now, it seems. Two days in a row, he lives in his opponent's jungle. He's got two levels on Helios right now. Helios is about to get Ding 5, but he's just a little bit too late. Jeez. Even after getting pushed off in that early game gank, because he got that kill on Poe Belter, it just gave him so much extra experience that he was able to keep up the pressure. It's really impressive Eve play there by I Will Dominate. I'll have to see where the Shen comes into play. They want both of their buffs. They want to invade the blue as well. This is the dangerous move. Oh, he used it and then he gets stunned up. That's not going to be the help. He flashes into the fight. Boy Boy thinks he's got the finishing damage, but Inox was already on the move with Whimsy from the top lane. It got canceled out. Locked in. We'll have to see what happened with this. Yeah, there's a, there's a question of whether Shen came into the fight. 
Right. That's exactly what this is because whether the basically did I will dominate die before Shen came in because that's how it's supposed to cancel. Yes. Or was it the famed Shen bug that he was disabled so long for? That's what we're, that's what this pause is for. We will have to find out. Very interesting. Quas talking with QC here. The fight is showing that Curse continuously wants more in this game. Yeah. You see EG with a gold lead, however, due to these kills recently. Get this panned out. I want, I want to see the replay. Because basically, it's, it, would, it would be, it's early on enough in the game, it's a basically a game-breaking bug, because if that ultimate doesn't go off because of the bug, then they would have to remake the game. But if it's right. because he was dead, then they just end up playing on. So that's what they're going to be reviewing right now. Little seconds. We'll have to see. Well, it was a very <laughs> intense fight. The shield definitely procced. And we did see Dominate go down, so it's the chance we'll have to see what happened there. All right, early, I just received word. Game. Sorry, Riv, I just received word that they reviewed the footage already. Eve died before the Chanel completed, so no bug. Right on. All it right. Was just Shen, not making it in. Play will resume shortly. All right. That was a pretty big play, actually, though, as far as EG is considered, because that was Dominate reaching a little bit too far. Right. A little too far. We're still going. We're going to be back in the game in just a few minutes. Three to one so far, eight and a half minutes in. And Dominate has been trying to aggress constantly. Brings us to this matchup where we're seeing that Quas thought he wasn't able to get his alt on in the fight. Going in favor of EG right yeah. now. They've pulled a thousand gold lead or a little bit more. Have control of the mid. And they may be able to work off this even with the fact that they have three mid now. Maybe able to get a turret. Maybe able to put yeah. good damage or dragon. They'll definitely be able to secure their blue buff. And the dragon, yeah, finally. They, it depends if they go straight for the dragon or not. They're in the midst of a fight as well yep. uh, when we ended up seeing the pause because of what happened. So we'll get back into this game. All quick like. They chase oh. down Boy Boy as well. And it's the dragon that they're going to be going for. Boy Boy goes down. His flash was up. Tried to use the playful trickster to get out of that one alive. And we'll see what Curse does get off of this. They have Helios. He's going to be able to use a little bit of Spideys to get himself up onto dragon with the team. Good moves from EG, fast play and fast fingers to win the last fight. Yeah, well, let's take a look at this fight actually now that we're back in the game. It was a great cocoon, chain on the stun, basically burning through so much of the shield. And yet, just as Shen was supposed to be teleporting in, it looks like. It was really close. I can see exactly why Quas would have paused yep. the game. I'm still... Want to see it in slow motion, but that was the end of the fight right there. Boy Boy falls as well. And this is a huge lead for EG now. We'll have to make sure that is a situation that could happen, but Quas needs to keep his head in the game. They know it's still straight and narrow here for both teams, and anybody can win this one in the end. 14-5 to 11-7. Dominate trying to be a little bit of a oh. nuisance here in the top side. Double Dorans in Nox doing some damage there with the Glitter Lance. That was a huge chunk of damage on I Will Dominate. Even with a little bit of magic resistance Ooh. on the page, he took that much damage. Special grab, be very careful. Altac's quite low on mana here. He's only going to get one good Fire Arcane timing out. Then they'll be pushed up to the turret. Crepo is just trying to give some harass. As EG knows that bit of advantage is something they just need to hold. They don't have the ability to take down a, a turret super mm. fast right now. So they're just sitting on that gold. Make sure they can get the buys in and wait for Curse to make a mistake. And the other team with the Kog'Maw right now, they would love it yeah. if Altec could get his Trinity Force and really start bullying this lane. As of now, just that Bio Arcane Barrage has been giving him some nice zoning potential uh, to keep up with Cops, Corky at least. Corky definitely does not make it into the late game as well as Kog'Maw does. Ooh, uh, low on mana looking vulnerable. There's the start of it. Spectral Helios oh, coming no. in with the damage. Elise, Ex Special tries to jump out to a minion. Inox oh, teleport. teleport! What a ward did they place previously? Ex Special blows to Flash. He actually may be able to save himself on this one. Dominate's coming down. Oh, the Flash hook from Crepo! Plays indeed. Max range as well. That's the flashy play that Crepo used to make all the time. Really good kill secure yeah. right there onto X Special. Oh man, Dominant was just about to come and defend as well. Very nicely done. Supports having both flashes down, so it's not like he was really losing much out of that one. You get more safety coming from Crepo in that lane anyways. So 3k gold lead, very nicely done as Quas batters down on this top turret. He's got the wards, he hasn't placed them yet. But that's going to be for the split push once he gets the turret down. Looks like he's going to be staying up top for quite a long time. Blue team's turret has been destroyed. 
good thing. Now this split push game can hopefully recommence. Let's check this one out right here. It was great how they lantern so that Helios didn't have to burn his cocoon or his repel early on, which is why it seemed like X Special was so completely dead. At all. But the ultimate gave him the window to push Helios out of range. That was actually really close of, of X Special getting away. But of course, right at the end there. May as well take the ride just for fun. <laughs> because he could. Looking around and looking down at the inventory, so 110 to 68 in that mid lane. Boy Boy not having fun. No, Boy Boy's really struggling in lane. And both of EG's solo lanes have actually been struggling a fair bit. It's when we think about that last play where, that ended with Krepo's flash on X special, uh, the gold exchange was actually in favor of Curse there because they got the turret for just one kill because Inox teleported down and left his lane exposed. Surprising that Curse came out of that on top. They still have no map control though. No, simple ward wins going over the flavor or the favor of EG and. Helios just placed his pink. When I see that many pink wards in an inventory, I kind of feel like a team saying, we're changing the pace of the game. Now we have control. We have the ability to protect this gold when we put it on the map. It's a power grab of sorts. They're yeah. really just trying to gain as much presence as possible. And Curse of the team is not one that can easily sweep out pink wards, for instance. Voiboy Boy has to be melee range before yep. he goes for any of his pinks on sweepers. No safe. That's assault. True. Whereas you have an Elise on Helios' part, if he ever needs to sweep out a ward, range champion, you come for him, he can repel away or stun you. Yeah. Big difference. And still keeping up on the forward wards as well, all the way up to white. You can see a special in the eyes of EG with the vision that they have. Helios calming down, picking up his red before he goes back to giving more farm and kills to his lane buddies. Minute and 20 onto Dragon, so he might go up top real quick and then hover this bottom side of the map. 3,000 gold lead will give EG a nice, nice advantage to start this dragon off with. And it may be Curse's last chance to pull back in the game. Dominate has been so aggressive this game and just barely missed out on a couple plays. He may be getting subdued fairly quickly here because Curse doesn't want to keep falling behind. 3,000 gold at 14 minutes is pretty large as far as deficits go. And the chances of a comeback are becoming slimmer and slimmer. damage under the turret. Nicely done. You can actually get a lot of shots on if you trigger that at the right time and it's not halfway shooting a minion. You get another turret shot out of it. It's not too shabby. So trade over blue to Void Boy. Getting ready for the dragon. And actually, Helios is going to be topside for this. Quite interesting. Yeah. No teleport they're as well either, so they're committing. They're pretty much just going for yeah. the turret here. Hoping to get a quas kill to boot right here. Inox has 50 oh. seconds on his TP, so he could make it. <laughs> I mean, they're very clearly trading a kill turret for the dragon right here. If Quasp could get away, it may actually pull Curse pretty far back in this game. It's a way too many resources up there for that turret by EG here. They're not going to be able to push much middle. They feel like that's all right to give up. Very interesting for EG. Wait a minute. Whoa. Just yeah. one more. Okay. Yeah. They're just pulling it out. Safe play. They weren't running away. Well, they haven't had eyes on right. Pobelter for a while, so they were a little bit scared that a Cinder would be bearing down on him. The Dragon may keep them in the game. They've still lost a whole bunch of pressure, but EG not controlling that I think is a decent size misstep. That mid turret's pretty big for Curse or EG as well, coming in strong. As they go to the top side now, they may be able to grab two here. A little bit of a map mishap coming in from Curse if they can get the position right on the time from the side of EG. It looks like a special will be there in time. They grab Quas, but be very careful about grabbing that tank. He can put you right back onto the turret, and they do consider that fact. Krepo Soaks have been pretty on point right here. That Curse wants to do a flank attack, but they are just completely nice spotted out, and Quas is too low. Plus, but they have the wards so nicely coming in on the oh side man. of EG. Curse has been hatching wards all the way through the jungle, and EG was prepared for this fight. Krepo is on fire right now. Those death sentences yeah. one after another, in part because of the vision control, but getting that fizz before Void Boy can do a thing that's, only increases their lead. That's crazy, and he's trying to put out the damage he has now. Instantly went for those Lucidity Boots before he could finish up after that Sheen. It's getting to be a stretch here for Curse in this one. The gold lead now about 5,000, 7 to 1. 
there's a lot of mistakes that can be made, but, but the way EG's running down the tracks right now, I don't see this lasting much longer. What is going on with this game? Because Curse looked so good yesterday. Yeah. And EG has been struggling for so much of the year. It's just like they can't hit the right stride in every game, but when they do, they look absolutely lethal. It's like EG's win against Dignitas, or, well, never mind. EG's win against COG last mm -hmm. week, or their, even their last win against Curse, where they beat them pretty handily. But when they had the game against Dignitas, that's what I was going for, EG lost zero kills to 13. Right. Oh, man, what a flash by Alltech. One more. Oh, he's level 10. One more level. He would have had the raid. Who's there? Who's there? It's Greplo again. Oh, go figure. Pope Elder got to save his flash, too, <laughs> because the Lantern took him over the wall. Wow, EG running amok right now. They pretty much own everything. And Helios himself can pretty much hold mid. 3v1. He's just hanging out. Hey, guys. I do got to say, I'm... I am happy when the 8th place team in the league can make plays like this. Yeah. Because these are such nice plays that we're seeing. I really do think the quality of play overall has improved substantially from last year. But EG continued to push in the bottom lane. That was awesome. Crepo could have thrown that hook. They could have grabbed him. But they have this top lane. They're not tunneling on things they don't need and don't need to do. Very nicely played, and they're going to go ahead and clear wards on the way out, grabbing up a little extra gold and shutting down Curse's vision even more. We're 18 minutes into the game, and Curse is about to lose their last second tier. Yep. There's not much they can do to get back right now unless they catch a really fantastic team fight. But Voidboy doesn't even have his Lich Bane. Whereas no. the EG Soul Laners are working on their death caps after their Athenes are done. Still piling pink wards into their inventories as they go back. Such a gold dude that they have right now. Uh, Triforce probably sitting on a lot of money for Alltech, actually. Nope, he's not. I'm a liar. He bought that Scepter, so he's actually staying safe in these fights. See what he decides to go with that instead of attacking a bit, or stacking a bit of attack speed. Coming up on 20 minutes. We haven't seen much of this guy in the fights just yet. We had one attempt, but... The fights haven't been on Curse's terms. No. So it's not the quickest communication to a Shen, something you haven't played with in a long time, to get the fight back in your favor. Maybe the split push will be something they can get themselves back in the game with, because the head-on game, not working for Curse. The craziest thing about this one from EG is it's a complete victory for them thus far. It's not just Alltech and Crepo right. making plays the whole time. Obviously, Crepo's made a ton of plays, but Inox in the top lane, Helios with his war control and presence in the jungle, Pill Belter with his solo kill on Boy Boy. It's all working in consort together. Crepo needs friends. Whoa! There's the friend! Whoa! Double flay! The double flay! And the box! They can turn this around! Here comes the teleport in from Inox. This is gonna be huge. Glitter Lance through the team. Pope Belter's there, but they're gonna get hit up again! Scatalamik goes back! And they're able to get out of this one. They didn't lose anybody! You oh, got kidding no. me! Curse just invests their entire team into that fight. And oh my god, chased all tech's going ham on this one. Helio starting in the front of the fight. There's a glitter lance from Inox. Quas gets hit back. Crepo started this play. Oh, that was so good. Ends up with three more kills for EG. Phenomenal team support right there. And really, Crepo's playing out of his mind right now. They're going for Baron. They have to. They have everything in their favor right now. EG, silver lining all around them right now. Yeah, you can see right here, the flay as they try to jump in. Helios, what do they do here? Oh, he's just, just showing us the Shen ult <laughs> as they're teleporting in. Then honestly, Pope Elther, I think he flashed over the taunt right there. Oh, Ruh row this does not look good. That looks a little bit better, but very <laughs> scary for Miji. Woo. Dominate Wait wants a minute. to try and get around. Oh my, and he's not going to have time. Maybe? Nope. Bad, 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 bad. Uh oh, <laughs> that vision. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that stun that came over the wall from Syndra as well. Yeah, that was pretty on point. Everything EG is doing, communication, the game sense, the everything. 13 and two of the 10,000 gold lead here, 20 minutes in, very nicely yep. done. That'll most likely do it. Now it's all about how quickly can EG finish him off or whether Curse can salvage some type of comeback here. Chris was so set to have a 2-0 week as well after that crushing victory of CLG.
But EG definitely had other ideas. This was also, if Curse were to have won this game, would have clinched, uh, or would have knocked EG out of the playoffs for sure. Mm -hmm. But this is not exactly the game EG has to win, you know? Not something EG was feeling coming into today. Week 10, day two, was not going to be that day that the door closed on them. That's what they woke up and said this morning. 22 minutes on the clock. EG continues to pick up more of the map for themselves. Two or three dragons and that Baron slowly, slowly ticking down on them. Someone take it. Yeah! There it is. Power friendship right there. <laughs> Sometimes not even looking. I'll be looking at the lane and walk past it. And Thresh is always like, why didn't you take it? I'm so sorry. It's the worst when Thresh breaks his lantern right before you're going to pick it up because he walks <laughs> too far out of range. You got it right. Neither of those things happened there. Baron buff with five people and 11,000 gold lead. It's going to be rather tough to defend, even oh. if there's not much of a tank line. Dominate looking for an Agonies from the back side, but I don't think he's going to be able to yeah, get it. I that mean, turret just melted. Corky and Shen were in the base, so Dominate's not going to flank in there 1v5. Oh. A good chum the water is maybe a lockdown, but... Even if Alltech dies, you have damage from They're gonna Inox, try. who's huge. They look like they want to try right now. Whoa, from the backside, Dominate. Instantly focused out. They saw immediately. It didn't work. That no. Was... There was a chase, too. EG is working like such a team at the moment. They all yeah. grouped as five. They peeled they back just the back. right moment. Exactly. They knew that he was going to be coming for a flank attack, and they pulled back as Voivoy showed aggression. Chris over telegraphed that play a little bit, but it was at the end of the day, a last to Jeffrey. Very awesome to see a team ahead not get too ahead of themselves, not want too much, not get greedy. EG's playing this very strategically and methodically. Back and forth. They've actually pulled away from kills they probably could have gotten to take more, to get more of the map. And now they go from mid to this top or bottom. Yeah, and this there's down. no evolve down for a flank. The only hope is to get enough poke down onto Altec that they can rip oh. it down before the fight. But even then, it's not like they've had time to build much magic resist, and the double AP from Syndra and Inox is enough to kill any man. It's almost impossible to chase these guys down. When they start kiting, you have Void who's across an entire area of the lane, and then you have a Glitter Lance. We'll see how they disengage this one. They Ooh. engage back onto the fight. Everybody goes to the middle. It's a huge moss pit right on the stairs, and Quas is going to be still alive. The last curse member who's looking to keep alive in the middle of the fight. A flash in from Alltech. That's a one. Can he get the two punch in? He's going to hit a living artillery. Oh, the oh, save! Oh. oh, the save! He gets oh. him on the fountain. He says, no, no, you don't. Espresso goes down. That's going to be the surrender coming out of Curse. EG taking him down at 24 and a half. Those smiles. What a game. Don't need to see him off, but when we do, they are bright and shiny. Just from start to finish, from top to bottom of their roster, they played fantastically. Why can't EG do this every game is going to be the question they need to ask themselves. And if they can find some form of consistency, they could make a run for it because they get the first blood on the Quas and I will dominate really easily. Pope out their souls is lane. And that's not even the strongest performers necessarily, which would be Alltech and Krepo making plays the whole game. Every single person on EG was on point this game. Really coming out strong. The map pressure in the beginning. Helios coming out with early pinks to make sure top side of the map was covered. And it, it seemed like they gave no worry to this gen. They played around him. They played their game. They actually, it seemed like they just went right for him. You know, I will dominate was trying to gank for Quas a lot. Yeah. And Helios and Inox were very ready for it, not suffering a single death up in that top lane jungle. Very nicely played. The, the aggression from Curse in these early games is definitely something to be reckoned with. We saw the aggression at red buff, then the transfer over to the blue buff, and mm -hmm. it that's the Curse wanting a little bit too much. And EG said, this might be one of those instances. Let's pile on our blue. Yeah.